big spear heavy. We got a lot of questions about this rifle. Why did the military adopt it? What makes it special? And why is it replacing the M4? Kicking off with ballistics, right here we have the 7.62 NATO, also known as the 308 spear. You're gonna be looking at right around 1,776 feet per second at 500 yards, which is pretty good for a 308. You also have 1,029 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. At 500 yards with the 308, you're looking at just under 58 inches of bullet drop. With 5.56, you're looking at just over 73 inches of bullet drop at 500 yards. So substantially more bullet drop, probably due to less velocity. The 5.56 is moving 1,225 feet per second at 500 yards with 207 foot-pounds of energy. So one thing with a dual rifle is, is weight. You need a light rifle to do that. Six spears coming in at 13.1 pounds, while my fully loaded M4 is coming in at 9.6. Both guns have cans. Both guns are incredibly close in length. The 5.56 is just an inch shorter. So why is this gun so heavy? With this being a dual rifle, we felt it was necessary to throw a one by six on it. That way you can do some close stuff and shoot at distance easily. It's a 308 cartridge, so it kind of demands that. With 308, you just have a bigger everything, bigger bolt carrier, bigger lower, bigger barrel. And all that is is just adding weight as you go throughout the entire rifle. The lower alone is substantially heavier than on an M4. The magazine alone is substantially heavier, heavier than an M4. This is a 25 round mag, and you can see it's actually a little bit longer than a 30 round AR-15 mag or M4 mag. If it's gonna be a dual rifle, 25 rounds you can usually do the job. I'm not too worried about the extra five, but the weight can be cumbersome. With the Sig Spear 25 round mag, you're looking at one pound, 12 ounces of weight. And with the standard 30 round mag out of an AR-15 or an M4, you're looking at one pound, one ounce. That's 11 ounces per magazine that you're increasing in weight and you're still losing five rounds per mag. So if you add all that up, you have two on your kit, one in the gun, you're looking at just over two pounds of added weight and a loss deficit of 15 rounds. Starting from top to bottom, this is a Sig Spear SBR 13 inch rifle. It's got a one in 10 twist. Uh, obviously we have a diligent defense can on here, which is really nice. I feel like this is a great suppressor host. It's really easy to switch between suppressed and normal operating conditions. Uh, something I really like about the Sig Spear, it's nice and out here in the front. Talking about this gas operating system, Sig does a really good job at keep making this easy to maintenance with this rail system. It's easy to remove and it keeps your gun really clean. All in all, it's probably one of my favorite systems on a duty rifle. Sig opted to do a non-reciprocating charging handle. I'm not a huge fan of it. I actually prefer the M4 rear charging handle. They did a really nice job with all the replacement parts on this. If you look through the rifle, you're really going to start seeing a lot of forethought put into this being a duty rifle. You know, there's different pins instead of machined surfaces. I actually like that. I feel like they did a really good job thinking that military contract through and adding these different features to make these guns last a really long time. One of my favorite things SIG did with this rifle is they threw on ambi controls and they have a bolt stop bolt release here. Kind of like the old Magpul bad levers. It's nice to see weapons evolving into adding these features that people have been aftermarket putting on for a long time. As far as money goes, the Sig Spear is listed for about $4,500. That's a pretty hefty price tag when you can build a, a generic 5.56 for around $1,000. Is this something you guys are considering buying? Drop a comment down below if you are. If you're not, let us know why. Uh, while you're down there, give us a like. Moving on back, we got a couple QD sling mounts here. But the worst thing about this gun is also one of the things that everyone likes and I think they think is pretty cool, is the folding stock. Uh, you gotta be a man to get this thing to open up. It is incredibly difficult to get it to where it can actually open. Um, I don't know why they put such a heavy spring in here. It's really nice to have it for vehicles, but you cannot do it unless you're pushing down on this, like on a table or on the ground. It's really hard to open. Um, they should have put a lighter spring in here. I realize you got a lot of Marines and grunts that are a lot stronger than I am, but things a pain in the ass. All right, guys, we're going to be stretching out the spear here at distance. Um, we're going to do some moving and shooting. We're going to do shooting and prone. Um, we're going to really stretch the legs out a little bit, and I'll give you my final thoughts when we're all done.
All right, guys, so we put a couple mags through the spear here. It didn't go as expected. I see now why Sig wants to sell these with flow through cans. It was like getting pepper sprayed in the face. I'm sure you're gonna see in the content, I was blinking a lot. I was a little slower when I was running and moving around um, with this heavier rifle. It was a little bit harder for me to do a reload with the bigger mags. It didn't feel as natural. Um, but of course I come from shooting a lot of rifle AR-15 stuff, so that's to be expected. If you guys do pick up this rifle, I would look at the flow through can. Um, that's gonna help a lot. But we're gonna hit the range right now and we're gonna throw the muzzle brake back on and we'll see how it does. So as you guys saw, we had some malfunctions with the spear here, shooting distance with the can. Uh, both on normal and suppressed settings, we were getting double feeds. So we want to put more rounds down range. We're gonna shoot some drills here. But first, let's hop into the military contract information. So the US military awarded Sig Sauer the 10-year contract to replace the M4 and the 249 with the XM7 and the XM250. They had to change the name earlier this year from the XM5 to the XM7. Apparently there was a conflict with a Colt. Uh, there was a trademark for the M5 and they were not happy that SIG was using XM5. The government did extensive testing on this rifle and the XM250 with 1.5 million rounds fired of the 6.8 and 20,000 hours of soldier testing. I'm not sure what that consisted of, but it sounds like they were doing a lot of testing on these rifles. With 20,000 hours of soldier testing, it sounds like they're really trying to get this rifle to fail and it didn't, um, which is gonna be more than good enough for civilians like us. So the US military was looking for a cartridge that could be perfect for peer-to-peer -peer fighting it could defeat body armor. You know, most of the wars we've fought is people aren't wearing body armor. Um, so I'm not sure what they're preparing for, but it's, it's really interesting and it's good for civilians because if we have to use our rifles, there's a pretty good chance we're gonna be fighting people with body armor. And I think it's important to have a cartridge that can defeat it like the 308, the 277 Fury, or that 6.8x51. In the contract, the US Army was gonna get 107,000 rifles, but they built into the contract that the United States Marines and the United States Special Operations Command have the ability to get rifles in the future. Something else I found pretty interesting is the standard loadout for the US Army is seven mags, which would put you at a 70 round deficit over the M4. It's kind of interesting that they care more about the firepower, if you will, of the cartridge than they do about the round count. Going over some information about the 7.62x51, also known as 308, I find it interesting. It has five times more foot-pounds of energy over a 5.56 at 500 yards. It's actually incredibly impressive, and it just goes to show that the U.S. military is really thinking ahead on this and looking at future combat missions that's going to be fighting people with plate carriers and kit, helmets, Stuff like that. One thing to take into consideration when you're picking a cartridge, if you end up picking up one of these guns, is the 277 Fury is superior to the 308. It has 18 inches less bullet drop at 500 yards, which just means it's a much flatter shooting round. The 277 Fury also offers 1,654 foot pounds of energy at 500 yards, which is going to blow 308 and 556 out of the water. 308 coming in at 1,264 foot pounds and 5.56 coming in at 521 foot-pounds. So pretty big difference between 277 Fury and 308, and then an even bigger difference between 308 and 5.56. It really starts to make sense why the US military is trying to go to this bigger cartridge. Yes, you lose more ammo. Yes, it weighs more, but it is clearly the superior round. 277 Fury is an amazing round, um, but you're gonna pay for it at $1.69 per round. As a civilian, I really can't justify shooting that when the chances of me getting into a firefight are slim to none. So to pay that to practice with that round is kind of insane. Um, when you can buy a 308 at 90 cents a round, which is almost half the cost of the 277 Fury, it's kind of the best of both worlds because you almost get the same ballistic numbers. Um, but when you go down to a 5.56, you're looking at 45 cents a round and you lose a lot of the ballistics. For me, it's kind of the sweet spot. I would really like to have a 277 Fury rifle I just can't justify the ammo. For a 5.56, I already have a bunch of ARs, so it'd be nice to add this to the collection and gain the benefits of a 308. 
in a short barreled rifle setup. As a civilian, some of the biggest pros I think that come with the Spear over the M4 or the AR-15 is the controls. You have to add a lot of things to an M4 to get it to match the versatility of this. The 308 or the 277 Fury just blows the 5.56 out of the water, um, both in kinetic energy, a velocity, uh, bullet trajectory. 308 and 277 Fury just do a much better job at piercing armor than 5.56. Um, unless you're running green tip, you know, to get up there in comparison, these rounds just perform a little bit better. I thought this would do a little bit better as a suppressor host, which I mentioned, you just get a flow through suppressor. It's gonna save your face from all the, all the beating it's gonna take with the powder. It's worth looking into this rifle with how lengthy of a list of pros there is. Um, and if you wanna add capability to your collection, this is a great gun to do so. With the most obvious benefits out of the way, Let's hit the range and start doing some drills. All right, guys, we're gonna do a one R one with the spear and then we're gonna do my everyday five, five, six. We're sitting at about 20 yards or so and let's get after it. All right, guys, so the bolt did not catch on the mag. Um, I had to rack it. The, we had this happen a couple of times now. This time we got a six, five, two which is awful. We got a couple that were sub five, but um, I don't know if it's the, the gun is dirty. It's not like in these mags, but we had a couple issues with the slide lock. As you can see here, both A zone, pretty happy with the hits. It just took way too long. Could be from the mag, could be from being dirty, but let's uh, run the AR-15 now and see how I do. Okay, so that one was a little faster at a 4.45. Um, we did a couple takes, had a couple at four and a half, one at four. It does feel like a toy. There's almost no recoil. It's really weird switching directly from the spear back to the AR-15. We had a couple that were in A zone the last shots, but these two, we got a low A and a high C. This one kind of sucks, should be better, but I was rushing. The AR-15 feels a lot nicer, both in recoil and um, reloads were a little smoother because it's just smaller mags, um, but you know, both were pretty good. All right, guys, we got four targets. We're gonna shoot two each target, starting with the AR-15, and then we'll go to the spear. Be honest guys the sig spear kind of surprised me it actually performed a little bit better than the ar-15 in this last drill it's just a really nice rifle my concerns on this are going to be ammo cost it's twice the cost of a 5.56 significantly more recoil than a 5.56 if my wife had to pick this up and use it it's pretty heavy and it has a lot of recoil for her um, she shoots the ar-15 a little bit better so that's something to take into consideration if you use this for a home defense gun it's got a lot of over penetration. You're gonna shoot right through your house, right through your neighbor's house. Take that into consideration when you go to buy one of these. It's a very niche rifle. It's kind of like a good recce rifle or you know, a good uh, duty rifle, not necessarily home defense. But overall, I'm really glad I added this rifle to my collection. If you guys really like this video, please drop it a like. We'll see you next time.